In looking at television uh, recently and various different, um, over the years, I suppose, reports on <clears throat> um, specifically African developing countries, uh, the children. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how in our world of spirituality does it square away <clears throat> that we have so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. And for years and years and decades and decades they have so little. And how would be the best way rather than continuing to donate, donate, donate small bits of money to so many uh, organizations to collectively help, I suppose, or how should we feel about the developing world or the third world or the southern world and those who are in depraved situations, especially the children? Well, you have only your point of view. And when you look from your point of view at situations that are happening around the world, of course, you feel the vibrational variance between where you are, how you feel, how you're living, and what you're seeing for others. So it's interesting, even though they really are not any of your business, because you cannot create in their reality, they're doing it. You make them a part of your creation by your attention to them. So seeing them live in a way that is substandard from your perspective causes you to launch a rocket of desire on their behalf. Then you find yourself wanting to do something to come into alignment with the rocket of desire that you have given birth to. In other words, you wish for them to eat better and you wish for them to have more and you wish for them to be joyful. There are a number of things that we want to give you to soothe you because unless you are soothed, you cannot come into alignment with your desire for them. So you cannot be of any real value. So we would like to say to you, make it first a vibrational journey. In other words, come into alignment with your dream for them. Hardly anybody you ever meet does that. Most people, even those that are wanting to influence you to giving money to their organization. And while we know that many of them are well-meaning and a percentage of what you give to them will actually go to the cause that you are, while much of it will go to the organization and the maintenance of those who are looking for opportunity to be of value. If you take the time to get your vibration in alignment, you are then casting a vibrational vote. And when you come into alignment with your desire, your power of influence is huge. You could lie in your bed on the other side of the world, having given birth to a dream because of what you saw on television. And your dream could be of a world of abundance that is more evenly distributed, where all people are coming to understand that there is abundance, so they open the doors to allow abundance to flow to them. And when you come into alignment with that vision, you then begin broadcasting from your point of view, which is the point of view of being in alignment with who you really are. And one who is in vibrational concert with who you really are, with source, is more influential than millions who are not. So you can do so much more than you know. The next thing we want to say to you is do not misunderstand and think that having your way of life is what their quest is. Because while it is certainly easier for you to live with the abundance of food and shelter and so on, and we would want that for all, as we feel the vibration, even of people in those environments, many of them are doing a better job of lining up with who they are than the majority of those who are living in yeah. this culture, yeah. in the America, because they are closer between what their life has caused them to want and what they are expecting is a closer vibrational vicinity than with so many who have all kinds of abundance who are unhappy. In fact, 
we see so many who have not the things that you think you need in order to feel good, who do feel good, and we see so many who have so much who do not feel good, because it's not about the manifestation, it's not about the material things, it's about the being in alignment with the energy flow. Nice. So soothe yourself by acknowledging that you could go to an underdeveloped country and you could see the way they live and you would suffer on their behalf more than they do because your picture of what you want for them in relationship to where you're seeing them living is a much greater spread than their own. Gotcha. Okay. Also, another piece to this <clears throat> is that when you give to someone without having lined up your energy, it bounces right off of them. It's like answering a question that hasn't been asked. They cannot receive the answer. And the dominant vibration that is often offered is we see that you cannot tend to yourself. We see that you cannot create for yourself in a productive or effective way. Therefore we create for you. And there is strong aversion. Haven't you wondered with all of those people who seem to be in need of all of that aid and all of the people around the world who seem to be willing to offer the aid, why doesn't law of attraction get more of that aid where it is needed? Mm -hmm. And we yeah. say, because need is upstream and offering of, of abundance is downstream, there nice. is something vibrationally out of whack with all of it. Nice. You just can't push the noodle. Nice. You cannot answer questions that haven't been asked and you cannot deliver. And another thing, you've been listening to us talking to all of you. And we want you to know that as humans on the planet, you are equal in your inheritance that source has promised. So all of you are living life from wherever you are and asking for improvement. And in every case, whether you live in Africa or whether you live in Kansas City, you are equal in terms of your asking and source answering. Step one and step two are happening worldwide, evenly, all the time, there is no injustice. So the question you wanna ask is, why are some areas of the world more receptive, more allowing of the improved lifestyle than others. And then we say, you gotta get up real close to them and you can't go by what's being shown to you on television because everything that somebody shows you on television has their motive all wrapped into it. And so if you are an organization and don't misunderstand us, we are not pushing against any of those organizations yeah. and many of them are well-meaning. Yeah. But if you are an organization that is wanting to attract money from a particular culture in order to keep your business running and to support your ideas of what's right and wrong in the world and to give some of it to those that you're using as your reason for attracting it to begin with, wouldn't you look around, don't they usually, for the most abject poverty, for the greatest need? And that's what they show you. And you are getting a very distorted picture of the need when they show it to you. We want you to take that desire that's burning within you and let your life as it comes to you, even if it comes through your worldwide technology that shows you things from all over the world, and you feel a genuine desire for an improvement for another person for, <coughs> or for another culture building within you. And you lie there in your bed and consciously and deliberately give birth to this rocket of desire. And then for the next week or so, while you are in your bed, getting ready to sleep, you deliberately turn yourself downstream as best you can until you feel yourself come into alignment it is our promise to you. The universe will show you the evidence of your aligned thought on behalf of someone else. And when you get into that alignment, then ideas will begin to flow to you of things that you can do that will make a difference. The universe will just line you up with someone who's going there, who knows someone, who has a, a, a direct route already open. I think that's actually um, happened to me already really really lucky and this brings me on to sort of the next part of the question uh, <clears throat> i have been very very lucky to be involved with a number of other people who would be aware and have a need to be enlightened have all also big fans of abraham uh, we're all from ireland <clears throat> but um, we all got involved in a project over the last two years 
that allowed us to be part of something amazing. Um, it's an invention that would, will probably change the way water is drunk or drank in the world. It's an invention that purifies all contaminant in water. And we all uh, attempt to align ourselves and, and, and the whole conversation all the time is the 17 seconds of concentration or the 64 seconds or, or the visualization and, and, and even another question to you is the power of what should we do about group dynamics and group visualization or group meditation to get this product to Again, <clears throat> the children in Africa are African people, our third world, I suppose, the best way to call them, are a developing world, uh, while at the same time giving the returns back to the investors who put the money in. And I'm sort of, uh, and some of us are very sort of in the middle, I really want to bring this because we know how amazing it is to the developing world, but at the same time we have to sell the patented technology or have people interested in licensing it to make. Well, just remember that when you talk about what you want and why you want it, your vibration is clean and clear. And the universe delivers to you the next step, the next step, the next step. And as it appears before you, you say, but of course, when you've lined up your energy with what you are wanting, it unfolds in a way that leads you along. You don't find yourself saying, what should we do next? It's so obvious because you, something appears before you and you feel such enthusiasm for it. You cannot deny it. And when exactly. you say, oh no, this is too grandiose. Maybe I should not go that way. You feel how wrong it is not to go. And when you turn your attention back to it, you feel that effervescence within you that says this is the right thing to do exactly. so until it feels like that you haven't lined up the energy sufficiently and we want to give you something about this group dynamic because mm. we so want you to hear you've been listening to us in all these days talking about how contrast helps you to give birth to a desire and we understand that when you talk with others that you could be giving birth to a collective desire as in this Thing that you're talking about here yeah. but we want you to hear this you do not need to come together with others in order to amass power because as an individual you have access to the energy that creates worlds and we think that's quite enough for your invention yeah. so ask yourself the question when I interact with others, is it a downstream experience or an upstream experience? So in the beginning, often collectively gathering with others feels more downstream, often because you have insecurities and you think as you come together with mm -hmm. others in the dynamics of the group, there will be more intellectual property, so to speak. There'll be more good ideas. Mm -hmm. But in most group dynamics, there are so many people with so many different agendas and so many different ways at looking at so many different things that then getting along in the group becomes the hardest work of the project. And we say, you really didn't need the group. All you needed was the idea, which source said, we're on it. And then you lining up with it and the universe delivering to you piece by piece by piece, anyone that's necessary for the completion. You see, when you gather together a group of people that might be lined up and might not be, yeah. and then you set out on a journey to accomplish something wonderful like this, and you're dealing all day, every day with the personalities in the group, some upstream, some downstream. It's so much more difficult than you cleanly giving birth to an idea, you privately in, the, in your bed when no one else is bothering you, coming into alignment with it, you feeling the explosion of coming into perfect alignment with this idea. Right. The universe now yielding to you step by step by step, mm. those who are already a vibrational match to what is going on in your vibrational escrow and you know it because when they come they fit right in yeah, when true. they come you feel them fit you don't say yeah. oh I need to give you a very clever presentation in order to convince you they come because law of attraction brought them and law of attraction always brings the right ones that's exactly what's been happening it's amazing we're all so amazed at it um, as people tell stories about things not working out well or struggles in cooperation we say it's always because they didn't do the vibrational work first they jumped into action too soon mm. so as we hear you and as we feel you you're on the right track here
Just be right. easy about it. We can feel a little bit of urgency from you that is not necessary. Okay, okay. Say to yourself and others that are participating with you, it's unfolding and these are the evidences that we have seen that show us how it's unfolding. Don't try to make it unfold. Let this be you directing universal forces toward your end result that you are seeking. And it is our promise to you. The universe has the resources and you're going to have fun in the unfolding. Excellent. Thank One you very, thing. very much. One more thing. Do it for the joy of it, not for the need of it. Because if you get focused on the need, you lose your connection to the energy. Yeah. And then we will tell you what Jerry said recently as he read a, a statistics from some publication. Nigeria was the happiest people on the planet. United States of America was 26th on the list. So you got to ask yourself, what is the measure of success? Mm -hmm. And you don't always know from your point of view. You think it's freedom, I suppose, but then that's perceptive as well. Good. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed.